In this video I'm going to compare and contrast a Python list with a NumPy array. This video is a follow-on from the previous videos in the NumPy playlist on this YouTube channel, so I recommend that you watch those videos first. Within those videos there's a computer program and what you're seeing here is one of the program statements taken from the computer program that we've looked at. And what this will do is to create a Python list. Now we can visualize this Python list with a schematic diagram as shown here and we can see it has contents and index and a name. The following code that's appeared is a statement from the program we've been concerned with and this produces a numpy array. And we can visualize that as looking like this here. It has contents, an index and a name. Now we can see with this program statement, which is producing a Python list, that list is going to be based upon the list class. And the program statement here, well that's going to produce a numpy array that is based on the nd array class. So you can see you have two schematic diagrams diagrams here that superficially look the same but what's clear is one's based on the list class and the other one is based on the nd array class. A Python list and a numpy array may look similar and if you consider the diagrams below you can see that they superficially look the same. They have contents, they have an index and they both have an appropriate name. However, this superficial look belies the fact that the Python list and the NumPy array are based on entirely different classes. So they are objects of different classes. And what we need to realize is the NumPy array, well, it has facilities, it has methods, it has attributes which make a NumPy array far superior for manipulating large data sets. The question you might have is why are NumPy arrays far superior than a Python list for manipulating large data sets? Well it comes down to the way in which NumPy arrays are stored on the computer's hardware and how this storing of the arrays can result in much faster processing of the data within a NumPy array compared to the data within a Python list. NumPy arrays are stored at one continuous place in the computer's memory. Let's draw a simplified view of the computer's memory as shown here. And you can see there are various areas within the memory and these would be memory locations where data would be stored. This is not a look in terms of the array structure, this is a look at the computer's memory. So be clear about that when you're considering what I'm just about to say. Now when the item are put into an array, they are put into the memory in the following way. The first item will be placed here. Now the next item will go in the next block of the computer's memory. The next item that's put into the NumPy array will go into the next block of the computer's memory. And the next item that's stored in the NumPy array will go into the next block of the memory and so on. So what we can see is that the data that's put into the array is all grouped together in what I've described as a continuous place in the computer's memory. Now this is given a name in computer science. It's called the locality of reference and it means that the data that you are referencing is all in the same place, one block followed by another block. It's not scattered throughout the memory. Now this has an implication, as we'll discuss later in the video, as to why it's faster to process data that's stored in this way. Python lists are not stored at one continuous place in the computer's memory. Let's look at a simplified view of the memory again, and let's say we're now going to be creating a list. 
And of course, the list we can visualise as we've already done. But when we reflect this onto the memory, how will the items in the list be stored in the computer's memory? Well, one of the items could be stored here, as you can see. The next item, well, it could be stored in a different part of the computer's memory. The next item could be stored right next to the previous item. But the item after that could be stored in a completely different area of the computer's memory. So we can see when we have a list, it is scattered throughout the memory. It is not in one continuous place in the computer's memory. Now, there are good reasons why this is the case when you look under the bonnet of how things are created in Python. But this is a statement of fact. You see, when the designers of NumPy implement the code, and they implement it mainly in C, they say, right, well, I've got this NumPy array, and I'm going to stick all the data right next to each other. Whereas the Python lists, well, they're used for different purposes, and they get stored in the computer's memory in this fashion that you're seeing in front of you. Locality of reference is a significant reason why processing data in NumPy arrays is faster than processing data in Python lists. It's not the only reason, however, why processing data in NumPy arrays is faster, but it is a significant reason. There are other reasons, but I won't go into all of these at this moment in time. What I wanted to do here was to give you a feel for why processing data in NumPy arrays is faster than processing data in Python lists. And having a quick look under the bonnet hopefully will achieve that aim. We've seen two diagrams which more or less show a Python list and a NumPy array being the same looking data structure. But I did point out in this and previous videos that that's a rather superficial look at the data structure of a NumPy array and a Python list. However, it's useful, but it can hide what's going on under the bonnet. So let me just quickly show you what a NumPy array looks like from the computer's memory point of view. And it's shown here. And you can see that the data items are all stored in a continuous block of memory. If we compare that now to how Python lists are stored, you can see here that the items are scattered throughout the memory. So there's a significant difference in the way in which the items that appear in a NumPy array and appear in a Python list are actually stored in the computer's memory. And these two diagrams will hopefully reflect that. Let's consider the memory for a typical ND array. And you can see that we have items stored in consecutive memory location. There's no gap between any of the items. When we deal with an ND array, it is usual to ensure that all of the items are the same. In other words, all floats, all integers. So they all are the same size. So this area of memory, which is one of the items, is identical to this size of memory area, this size of memory area, because they all hold the same type. So that's the first thing we need to concern ourselves with when we look at this memory structure. Now, when you go and get the data from the computer's memory, addresses are stuck out onto the address bus, and they will select the memory areas in turn. Now, it just is the case that you can arrange for the registers inside a central processing unit to hold the addresses of where you have the data in the computer's memory. So one of the registers could point to this block, and then when you want to go to the next block, you just add a number to the register, and it will then automatically point to the next block. And when you wish to go to the next item, you add the same number to the register, and it'll point to the next block and so on. Now, when you use registers in this way, because registers are fast, then you've got to speed up there already. The other advantage of having all of the items together like this is you can bring the whole lot into cache memory, which is faster than random access memory. So there's another speed up there. But the point is, the hardware will allow you to execute data items faster if they're all in the same area of the computer's memory. Of course, you can now go away, do some research yourself, look up register 
addressing, which means looking at the architecture of central processing units and how machine code actually works. You can look at cache memory, which works because you have what's called the locality principle, which makes the fact that it's usual for data to be grouped together so you can transfer it from slow random access memory to fast cache memory. There's a variety of things that you can do. The people who have designed NumPy have done this for you and they write the code in C because C allows you access to the hardware of the computer's central processing unit. So you can choose ways in which you can speed up processing. Of course, this is all well and good, but the purpose of a high-level language, and Python is an example of a high-level language, is that it hides all the details of what goes on under the hood of Python and allows you just to say, well, I'm just going to use ND arrays because they're quicker, a lot quicker. That's really all you need to know as a high-level language programmer. I'm using ND arrays for large data sets because I can process the data in there quicker. And also, this ND array class gives any objects I create of it facilities that allow me to do lots of mathematical things to that data. So really, that's all you need to know. But I personally think it's worth worth delving into the architecture of the hardware a little bit and that's what I've tried to show you here. Now let me be clear, there is nothing wrong with Python lists, they have their place. But when you get a large data set, don't consider using them. An advantage of Python lists is they can store different types. So you could, for example, have a Python list that stores your name, which is a string, your address, which is a string. It could store your age as an integer. It could store bank details, such as your account number as an integer. It can store mixed types. But this, again, will result in a Python list being slower because all the areas of memory that store all these different types will be different sizes. And it's not then efficient from the hardware viewpoint to get at all these different areas of memory that are different sizes, but all still part of the same Python list. Now, there's a lot more we could look at here, and I do not want to go on any more talking about this, but I want to leave you with the fact that just because ND arrays are very good for data sets and are faster it doesn't mean that you should use them to replace python lists both have their purpose just bear that in mind but you want to manipulate large data sets use an nd array let's consider what happens when this program statement executes we have to consider the list class and it is going to produce an object and this object is going to be a list its class is list its type is list it's based upon the list class if we look at this which will create a numpy array this creation of an object will be based upon this class which is the nd array class and of course what will happen this will create an object and this object will be of type ND array. Now, these two schematic diagrams here look the same, don't they? But we've just seen, if we look under the bonnet of Python, the way in which these are structured underneath the bonnet is different. And they're different because this is based on the list class and this is based on the ND array class. Let's consider the instance of the ND array class. So let's move it to one side, as you can see here. And let's look at what we have. We have these members give much better mathematical facilities. So defined within the ND array class are methods that will allow us to process the data within an instance of the ND array class. Now, when you see me use the word members, when I'm referring to classes, it means the attributes and the methods. Now, we can see that this class has been responsible for producing the object, and this object is an instance. So this instance, i.e. object, will have access to the mathematical facilities that were defined in the class. 
Now, I'm using the term mathematical facilities because at this stage, we really don't have a handle on what methods are available in the ND array class because I haven't covered that aspect of an ND array yet. That is what the rest of the playlist is going to be about. But I wanted to show you in this video a number of things to emphasize the object orientated nature how everything is based on a class also to show that under the bonnet we have the ND array class defining ways that allow the data within an instance of the ND array class to be processed faster and much faster and it takes advantage of the hardware of the central processing unit and some of the more modern aspects of modern central processing units these are also facilitated by the class that is the ND array class, which is part of the NumPy module. But finally, and I've said this already, and I'm aware I'm repeating myself, but do not let this idea of an ND array class, don't allow it to make you think that somehow Python lists are no use. They are, they just have different uses than an ND array. So knowledge of Python lists is very important if you're going to be writing code in Python. But move over to data science, you better learn about ND arrays. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.